Hey, it's Mike from Mag Plus, and in this video, I'm going to take a print layout and convert it to a Mag Plus layout, a fully functional two-layer tablet-optimized layout in under 10 minutes. So the first thing I do is open up my blank Mag Plus template. This comes as part of the production suite. You can see there are a bunch of built-in layers to handle that layered content presentation we have, as well as some guide layers that just kind of help you see what it's going to look like when it translates out to the actual iPad. So this is my print layout. Typical spread out of popular science. This is the megapixel section, photo heavy. The first thing I'm going to do is just start copying and pasting elements over to my Mag Plus template. I don't need to convert anything. I don't need to put it in any special folder. The system will take care of all that later. All I need to do is build the layout the way I want it to look. So here I've copied and pasted that image onto this B main content layer. That's really the full screen image slide, and it can be images, text, movies, whatever you want it to be, but the full screen slide that is in that background layer. You can see, as soon as I paste that in, how much smaller the spaces you have to work with. It's a big, beautiful screen, but it's still not like our spreads that we have in print. So I'm just going to adjust this to get it in just the right sort of cropping for this dual orientation that we have. In the Mag Plus system, you can design once for that center, always visible screen and make it work in both orientations using pinning, and I'll show you how that works a little bit later. What I want to do now is make sure that this background is going to look good no matter which way the user holds it. So since that image, and this is all the image I have to work with, doesn't quite go full screen, I'm just going to make a black background here on that same B layer, and then I'm going to group these elements together. Grouping is something you're going to want to do a lot of to keep images and elements together on the page. So now I'm going to bring over this little bit of page furniture here, this little section announcer that says we're in the megapixel section. Again, you can see how much bigger it is on the print page. I'm going to keep this pretty straightforward and just shrink it down. But what I'm going to do with this is use that space up at the top that's only visible in the vertical orientation and not visible when somebody turns it to the horizontal orientation. This is one way you can get kind of creative with this cross shape that you have to design for, that always visible middle area, and then the areas on the sides and, and top and bottom that are only visible in each orientation. Some of our designers, for instance, have used that to put a table of contents that would only be visible regardless of which orientation you're holding it. So now I've got this kind of where I want it to be. I'm just going to get a little bit tweaky here with the size and try to fill that spot as nicely as I can. You can see the guides we have built in there show you the edges of that visible area in each orientation. So that looks pretty good. I've also put that on that B pin blocks layer so that I can actually assign some pinning to that later and we'll show you what that looks like. Now let me just grab my text elements here and copy and paste them over. Now these I want to put on the A layer. Typically the A layer is used for text because it's the layer that the user can turn off simply by double tapping the screen and particularly in a layout like this I want to give the user that ability. I want them to be able to turn off that text and just look at that full screen cool image. In a typical kind of two-dimensional layout, you have to make that compromise between how big that image can be if you still want to fit the text on the screen. This dual layer approach of Mag Plus means that you don't have to make that compromise. You can have both on screen at once and let the user control what they're actually looking at. Now you can see I'm shrinking this column of text a little bit and I'm letting it drag off the bottom of the visible area. That's because this A layer scrolls freely up and down. So the user will see a little bit of it, and then they'll see it trailing off the bottom of the screen. That'll be an indication to them that they can scroll up and see more of the story. Now you can add additional pages to the layout and more background images, and that's covered in another video out on our site on magplus.com, as are a lot of other specific functionalities that you can do, including links and movies and more details on pinning. I'm just going to build something pretty basic here. So I'm keeping this nice shaded background that we had, this ghosted background, uh, as part of the print page because I just think it's a nice way to set that text off. And you can see what I've done here is split up the headline in the text box. Again, just sort of optimizing this layout for the space that I have to work with. Here I want people to be able to see those glasses on the guy. I want a little bit of that text creeping up out of the bottom. And you can see the way that text is interacting with that visible area. When somebody's holding this in a landscape orientation, they're only going to see a little bit of that peaking up. When they're holding it vertically, they're going to see a little bit more of that text. And we'll assign some pinning to it so that this always stays on the left-hand side. You'll see that in a minute when I get into the pinning. So I'm going to group these elements together. Grouping lets the system treat multiple elements like one single object. So if I want to keep that transparency, 
uh, grouping is the way that I do that. And then really what the system does on export is just take a picture of that grouped element together. So grouping is your friend. You can see up till now I haven't even done any MagPlus specific things. I hadn't even opened the MagPlus plugin because all I'm doing is making the layout the way I want it to look, moving elements around, doing what you do as designers and making a pretty page. And now I'm going to open up the MagPlus plugin and I'm going to assign some pinning to these objects. You can see the things that are on the B pinned blocks layer and these elements that are on the A layer actually already have some pinning set to them because I've got an automatic pinning set in the settings. Now I've picked the folder that I want to export things to later, and I'm just going to give this an ID. That's really just a system ID, so the system knows when you're linking across pages. And the name field is what the user will actually see if they bookmark this page later. It's kind of the publicly visible title of this page. I'm going to leave the rest of these settings pretty much as they are. I'm going to grab one more element out of here, this little popsci.com box and I'm just going to put this on the page as well and I think I'll leave this I'm going to pretty much leave it the size it is I'm not going to tweak it too much and I'm going to put this on the B pinned blocks layer because I want this to still be visible when somebody turns off that text you know I'm keeping it off the image so it's not going to interfere but I want it to move dynamically and stay visible even when somebody turns the screen so I've got it near at the bottom there in a space that you think would become invisible when somebody turns the orientation to landscape, but you'll see with the pinning it actually stays visible. Now the last step before I review it is just to save the file. And now I hit my fast review. What this is going to do is quickly build the file exactly as it will look in the reader. And because I've hit fast review, I'm going to have low res images. I can also hit full review to get high res images. So now you see it out in the reviewer app. I'm using the simulator, but this is what you'd be seeing on your iPad running the reviewer. I can turn that text on and off. I can scroll it up and down. And now you see when I turn the device, the way those elements have moved dynamically according to that pinning that I've set. Now, this is a little bit ugly. I don't like the way that head box and that megapixels box are interfering with each other. So I'm just going to go turn off the top bottom pinning to that box. And I'm going to clean up the way these things are lining up a little bit. You can see that the purple guides here are showing you the actual visible area. And the green guides are just giving you a little bit of a breather room to that visible area. It's just a handy sort of extra guide. You can delete those, turn them on and off as you like. We just put them in the template as a way to get you started. So I'm going to clean up my kind of ugly boxes a little bit here. And I've already changed that pinning. This pinning has been automatically set. Again, if you leave that settings to auto pinning, the system will figure out what edges things are nearest and it will set the pinning for that. So now things line up a little bit better there. It's still maybe a little ugly in that head box, but now you'll see that megapixels doesn't jump down when I've turned it because I've left that top bottom pinning off so it stays in that invisible area and gets cropped when I turn the device. But that little popsci.com box, you can see that does move. This is just a really basic layout, but you can see how we've done it in less than 10 minutes. Think what you could do with more time.